What is the relationship between spirituality, religion, and theology? Can you be spiritual but not religious, or religious but not spiritual? Can you practice theology without being either religious or spiritual? Today we are going to look at the differences and relationship between these three terms. Spirituality can best be described as a lived relationship with blank. I intentionally leave the end of this definition blank because you can be spirited at anything. Think school spirit, for example. You can certainly attend a school, but if you don't have a lived or active relationship there, you don't get involved, you don't make any connections with your teachers, peers, or subject matter, then you aren't really going to feel any sort of school spirit. It's a pep assembly without the pep. The word spirit in Hebrew translates to wind or breath. And these terms I feel adequately describe the role of spirituality. Wind is a force that moves you. Breath is a force that provides life. If you are connected enough with something, whether it's school or sports or God, you will be moved and it will provide you with a life-giving energy. Religion is best defined as an organized group of worshipers who share beliefs, practices, and a moral code. The Latin root portrayed here translates to, to bind together. If you take a group of spiritual people, that is a group that feels a connection with each other and God, and they join forces and organize, they become a religion. And this religious identity binds them together. Think Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. What many people don't realize is that Pentecost was actually a Jewish feast day, known as the Feast of the Weeks, that celebrated the gift of the law to the Israelites at Mount Sinai. Fifty days after the resurrection of Christ, the apostles were together in a room celebrating this religious holiday when they encountered spirituality in a whole new way, being described as like tongues of fire appearing over them. They spoke different languages but understood the meaning. At that religious ritual, the apostles felt a connection to God and with each other in a way that they hadn't before. This motivated them to be willing to risk persecution by going out in public to preach the good news of Jesus. Now, have you ever felt a connection that was so strong in a group that you and other members were motivated or inspired to just go out and do something about it? If so, you had a spiritual moment. So what about theology? Theology is Greek for God talk, and in short, it's people talking about God. I've described in past episodes that a good way of understanding theology is people making sense of stuff, or people providing meaning to things that have inexplicably happened to them, or the answers to life questions. The key word when it comes to theology is meaning. So what is the relationship between spirituality, religion, and theology? Can you be spiritual but not religious? Yes. But as C.S. Lewis describes, religion is like a map. It provides a sense of direction when you're out at sea. Now, could you sail the Atlantic without a map and have a moving experience? Absolutely. But it's easier to have a map helping you keep your bearings. Religion is a tool that aids one's spirituality and keeps us on course. Can you be religious but not spiritual? Unfortunately, yes. I think we've all had experiences in church where there's an absence of spirit. There's no connection with the community, the text, or the rituals. It's when people say, I get nothing out of going to church. The ritual of going to church is a religious action. But if there's no connection, then it's not spiritual. You're part of a group, but you're not connected to that group. In 2013, Pope Francis made headlines when he told nuns not to live their vocations as old maids. He asked all religious clergy and lay people to remember the spirit of their calling, that the spirit should be lively and joyous, not sad and grumpy. In this case, Francis was talking about people who are religious but no longer spiritual. Can you practice theology without being spiritual or religious? Absolutely, but I think it'll get sloppy. The Judeo-Christian tradition is almost 4,000 years of commentary or instruction to help guide meaning when doing theology. It would be shameful to not at least tap the resources that religion can provide. Further, I think there's an advantage to doing theology if you're spiritual. Again, spiritual means you're connected to it. So if you're trying to make sense of God, it's easier writing from an experience you can relate to. Let me give you a secular example. Growing up, I could not imagine having children of my own. I'd scoff at any parent who narrated every single action a child does, or offers to show me a picture, or even worse, offer me to hold their baby. I didn't understand the mentality surrounding parenting because I was not a parent myself. Now that I am, I get it. The meaning of those actions are much clearer to me now because I'm connected now. In regards to theology, it's harder to make sense of God's involvement in your life if you're not involved in God. 
So those are my opinions. You can be spiritual, but not religious. You can be religious and not spiritual. And yes, you can do theology without being either, but you'll be most effective if all three work together like it did for the apostles at that first Christian Pentecost.